Welcome to Raiders on the Record, the podcast featuring Hastings High School Athletics. I'm Athletic Director Trent Hansen. My colleague Tim Hanneberg and I work together to bring you the stories of Raiders sports. We are thrilled to share conversations with the athletes, coaches, and alumni that represent Raider Nation. Check back weekly and be sure to share this podcast with your friends in the Raiders Network. Michael Johnson is a senior at Hastings High School and is a 2023 Raider graduate. During his time at Hastings High School, he has participated in tennis. Michael lost his ninth grade year due to COVID. Since then, he has earned three varsity letters while playing doubles, second singles, and now first singles. During his senior year, Michael has been a member of the Leadership Council, which he attributes to a large amount of his success with his ability to lead younger athletes. Michael gives a great interview about what it means to be a high school athlete, and especially how special it is in Hastings. Michael plans to attend St. Mary's in Winona, where he will play tennis. All right, here we are with Michael Johnson. Michael, we always start at the beginning of someone's life. So once again, let's start at the beginning of your life. Did you always live in Hastings? Did your family eventually move to Hastings? Let's hear about your mom, your dad, any brothers or sisters. Once again, let's hear about your life growing up. All right. Um, well, my family's not originally from Hastings. My my mom grew up in Woodbury, and my dad um, was from the east side of St. Paul. And they both, um, they're high school sweethearts out of Hill Murray. Um, and, you know, when they got married, they moved to Hastings and had me and my brother. Um, my brother graduated um, Hastings, like, four five years ago now um and you know growing up I always kind of like looked up to him um I went to Kennedy Elementary um those are those are some those are some times <laughs> um went to Hastings Middle School um it's kind of yeah <laughs> I don't know what else. That's, that's perfect another thing we always like hearing about is it doesn't have to be every single teacher you had, but is there any teachers from each of those schools that really stick out in your mind that really had a big positive impact? So once again, you talked about going to Kennedy, you talked about going to the middle school and right now you're at Hastings high school. So yeah. any teachers at each level that had a really big impact on your life? Um, well, Kennedy was, I, I kind of, that's a lot of, that's a blur for mm-hmm. me. I can't, <laughs> I can't really remember. Um, I, I had you for a gym, right? Oh, yeah. Like that's okay. Because when I, when I, when I first saw you in the halls, like my freshman year, I was like, why does this guy know my name? I was like, where <laughs> do I know him from? And I'm like, Oh, yep. whoa. um, Kennedy so it was great times. Oh, the best, the best of times. <laughs> Parachutes went crazy. Oh my God. Um, I mean, middle school wise, it's kind of, it's kind of hard not to like, you know, not to, not to say like Mr. Johnson, you know, the, the, the classic middle school teacher. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, impact wise, the only thing like he really did was like, just kind of teach me how to like do, like do my work on time and just like accountability for sure. I mean, no, no other teacher really through middle school is, it it felt, it felt like a junior high, but I think, I feel like Mr. Johnson kind of made it feel like a, like an adult like teach you treat you like everyone else kind of yep. class. and once again right now you're at Hastings high school any teachers mm-hmm. here that have a, had a really big impact on your life um i mean i would say off the top of my head probably um probably mr uh uh, Mr. Willette. I mean, not only because he's like my former coach, but also because I mean, having him for my uh, senior year, it's just been such like a really good positive experience, and like just all around like it's it's what's making my senior year like fun for me instead of the dreaded junior year, you know. For sure. So the next thing we always like hearing about is the sports that you played growing up. For someone like you, let's stop somewhere around ninth grade. That's when. Sports get a little more serious at the high school yeah. level. So uh, let's hear, once again, the sports you played growing up here in Hastings. Yeah. I mean, as a kid, I was never really like super, super 
like sporty and athletic my parents pulled me in um they pulled me on skates when i was like younger but i never i never fully went that far in it um they pulled me in lacrosse um they uh they they pulled me in swimming you know but the only thing that really ever stuck i think was um tennis Mm -hmm. um and i think that's mainly because of my brother who you know growing up um because he was five years ahead of me um he like just entered high school as i was just entering middle school so like seeing him like start on the tennis team i was like oh i have to do it now i have to be better than him so that's when i joined my fifth grade and i was playing a little bit before them but never like like with the goal to you know improve but since fifth grade it's really just been tennis 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 Mm -hmm. um yeah that's what i would say awesome I know it might take a while, but let's go through your sporting career at the high school here. I always like starting in ninth grade in the fall. We could go through the fall, winter, and sport, or, and then um, the spring season for you. Mm-hmm. Uh, and if there's any sports you didn't play at those uh, during those seasons, that's okay. And we could maybe just skip to the, the most important one here, tennis for you. And then uh, a lot of other things we'd like hearing about is any personal accomplishments. So uh, your section placings, if you're mm-hmm. a captain, uh, what level you played at. And then, um, you know, for you in, in tennis, what, uh, what kind of position you're at? So double singles, mm-hmm. things of that nature. And then if there's any team accomplishments as well, let's hear about those. So let's start in that fall season of ninth grade and we'll go through your whole high school career here. All right. Um, well, freshman year obviously got cut short, um, due to COVID. I, I didn't play any sports ever during the fall or winter. Um, I thought about trying out for like basketball. But then I saw, I was like, that seems like a lot of like just running. So I was like, I don't really want to, I don't really want to deal with that. Um, but then spring, um, didn't have freshman year, obviously again, um, which kind of stunk because that entire year, that entire season was just like COVID calls, like checking on the team, but it really wasn't a team because we couldn't do anything. Um, so that was kind of rough. Um, And then on top of that, after my freshman year, um, first, uh, for tennis, we'll let announced that he was going to be retiring from varsity coach. And, you know, I was a little bummed out because, you know, I never fully got varsity coached by him, which kind of stunk. Um, but he does, he's, he's made up for that recently for sure. Um, sophomore year was my first actual like high school sports um you know experience it was honestly kind of like it it was very i was very skeptical i was like i very much went into the mindset of like you know i'm better than everyone else here i'm like very egotistical very like nobody's got anything on me and then i got completely showed up from everyone um which was just fuel of the fire that just completely just drove me and pushed and pushed me um, to just get better. But um, yeah, sophomore sophomore year was I was I think I was on varsity. Um, never, never did anything major. I think I was playing doubles, um, like low doubles, like three. Um, and I apparently lettered, but mm-hmm. never got that in the mail. Or never got any of that. Um, but it's it's whatever. Um junior year was when I definitely like I definitely hit my growth spurt sports wise. Um that's when I started playing singles for the team. Um and you know, and and you know, going back to sophomore year, I I had people on the team um of like remnants of Willette, you know, where it was like the old, like older teams, like older guys where you can like really show off of, but start of my junior year, it was really only, it was really only me, Brady T garden and Brady Zach, um, for like the upper class. I might be forgetting one or two other guys, but we were, we've been a pretty young team for most of my high school experience. So, I mean, since my, since my junior year, I've kind of, wanted to take a step up and you know put one foot forward for the for the team i um 
we uh, we started the leadership council um, for teams, um, and I was involved in that my junior year, which was so so I'm so happy about um, you know just being able to I don't want to say have a title, but you know be able to have that you know additional feeling of like I can lead the team, I can mm-hmm. I can I'm, I'm impactful. Um, it was really great. Um, especially in my, again, development, um, as a player, um, junior year, we finished, I think fifth or fourth, like right in the middle of our section. Um, you know, again, a young team and it probably will be a young team for quite a bit. We, we actually have, um, I think it was like we had some 40 or 30 kids on our middle school team like last year, which is huge. Um, So uh, I'm certain Zuzik's very excited about that. Um, But junior year was really when I like put the foot on the gas. Um, And now senior year, I'm just, I'm excited to get going. You know, we got two more weeks until we can start practicing I was I was already out on the court for like the past three weeks, like getting ready. Um, you know, I'm just I'm I'm pumped. I'm I'm all gas, no brakes. You know. <laughs> so I got a couple questions for you. So you talked about making a big growth from your tenth to eleventh grade year, especially when it came to tennis. Mm-hmm. Uh, this could be maybe a physical thing. It could just be a tennis related specific thing. Mm-hmm. What went into that big growth and? Maybe it was something outside of tennis, maybe weightlifting, or once again, it was just, uh, you know, maybe hitting puberty more and, and, and getting bigger and stronger and, and, and faster on the court too. Or maybe it was a tennis specific thing that maybe something clicked with you uh, that you made some big growth with. So what do you think that you made that big growth from that 10th to 11th grade year? I mean, honestly, it was, it was a mix of everything. Um, you know, puberty wise, sophomore year was rough, you know, I was mm-hmm. a little bit, I wasn't, I was taller, but I wasn't as tall. Um, I was, I was a little skinnier, but I wasn't as skinny, you know, I was, mm-hmm. I was still thick around the waist. Um, but then I think I just, I just hit this like little growth spurt and, you know, I just, I, I think it was my sophomore year and I think my junior year too is when I had lift class with Corkish and that flipping Canadian pulled me through <laughs> so much. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm very grateful to, to be active and to have Hastings to, to give me the opportunity um, to, you know, get physically fit. But, I mean, mentally wise, too. I mean, tennis is so much – is such a mental game. It's so just in your head. You're the only one on the court if, you know, you're playing singles and you got another one playing doubles. But a lot of the, a lot of the time it's – you can have great technique – and you can be this absolute human specimen, but if you're just absolutely crapping it out in the court in your brain, you're you're not gonna you're not gonna go anywhere. Um, so I definitely flipped like a switch um, going into my junior year that I was kind of like, I need to like, and, and I was I was an absolute brat my sophomore year. I was such a little. I, I'll refrain from swearing, but I was, I was a little, <laughs> I was a little turd. Um, I was, I was always slamming my racket on the, on the cord and hitting the net and mouthing off. Um, and it wasn't until I kind of got a talking to from my mom, um, being like, you're embarrassing me out there. I'm like, Oh my God, I'm sorry. Like, I, yeah. Um, so I definitely, a flip, definitely a switch definitely flipped. Um, going into my junior year and then i mean technique wise after my sophomore year summer or after my sophomore year season um the coaches like recommended like um going into like hta hastings tennis association and doing like their summer like drills and match play and like getting like coaching outside of the regular season that um um, that definitely helped me out, you know, being able to like be exposed to other peers and other people that are around my same skill level and are, like my same age, definitely like just skyrocketed me 
and pushed me to to get to this like new level that I've never really been at. Um, but yeah, that's that's really it since since sophomore to junior. Awesome. Next thing you talked about this big middle school group that is uh, possibly coming up to the high school maybe this year, next year, kind of somewhere around there. And you being a senior right now, you're going to have a big impact on those younger athletes. So you talked about being on the leadership council. I guess a couple different ways to maybe frame this. Like, what are you excited for when it comes to your leadership skills with all those younger kids coming on the team? Mm -hmm. Or how are you going to use those newly found leadership skills from the leadership council or maybe other areas of your life to really have a big impact on those kids? I mean, with with that many kids, it's it's gonna be definitely a it's gonna be a struggle trying to trying to get to that many kids and you know make an impact on that many. But I mean, as 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 much as I try to do, um, since you know tennis is a spring sport for boys, um, fall for girls, like for the guys team, I've I've tried like throughout the year to always try to like I don't want to necessarily promote. But kind of like act like a billboard in the hallways, being like, "Hey, you gonna you gonna call for tennis? Oh my mm-hmm. god, like you'd be so good!" And you know, um, seeing the guys that have been on the team and like propping them up, and on, honestly, sometimes embarrassing them in front of their friends. But I, I think that I I have no regrets about mm-hmm. that. Um, but I mean, trying to trying to make an impact on you know, the younger guys, since we are such a young team, I think, um, I think all I'm going to have to do is really just be myself, I guess. I don't know. Maybe, um, pick on a few of them. There's this, there's this one underclassman, um, who I think, I think he also wrestles as De- Devin Yang. Oh yeah. Um, that guy's that guy's got some moxie for sure. He is he's a little bit of a stinker when he when he and during our season. Um, I I love him, but he uh all of last year he had this he had this thing where he liked to have this little bit of a rivalry with me and like I don't want to say pick on me, but he was always like he was always like I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna mess you up. I'm gonna beat you. Mm-hmm. Like you you don't think you're the best on this team? Get out of here! And I'm just like the whole time like ice cube just like what are you talking about bro like i did nothing to you um and seeing seeing him develop as a player too like he's gotten so good and such a short like way better than i did in such a short amount of time um i'm really excited to see him his senior year um because you know he's a great blow his senior year like really blossom as a player and like fully you know, engage in that leadership role because I'm, I don't, I don't know for sure, but I'm sure there's quite a, quite a, a lot of the younger guys that really look up to Devin. Cause I mean, what's not to like about him, mm-hmm. you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's great. So you're in your senior year right now. Mm-hmm. I get two different things. Number one, we can preview the tennis season comes cause it's got, it's coming up here pretty soon. Uh, and then number two, let's talk about your post high school plans, college. If you're going there, uh, if you have a major picked out where you might be going, things of that nature too. Mm-hmm. Um, senior year, we're, what we're mapping out, um, a relatively big roster tennis wise. Um, we had our first meeting, I think about two weeks ago now. And there was, it was a pretty big, it was a pretty big show up. I was very surprised about that. I didn't think so many guys would come and it's, you know, it's a younger team. Um, so I think we're sitting pretty good with numbers wise varsity wise. I think we can, we definitely have some development to do, but we're definitely going to be a force to reckon with this year. I'm feeling good about it. I feel confident. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of guys that have, you know, been with the program and in HTA for so long. And I mean, it's, it's so cool to like, see them, you know, develop, um, and get better um and how that's reflected in the season when it you know not when it matters but when it matters you know um mm-hmm. me wise um i'm i can't i can't it can't start fast enough for me you mm-hmm. know i'm trying to i'm trying to really enjoy my senior year in school and you know in sports and it's it's been it's been a little emotional seeing you know all these like our hockey, our hockey team, you know, coming short and, you know, 
the wrestling winning state champs and you know football you know seeing all the guys crying when it's the last game i'm just like it's not gonna happen to me you mm-hmm. know like um i'm a little nervous for it to end kind of don't want it to yet um but i mean it'll be a good transition for me because i mean i'll be i'll be attending saint mary's university in winona which i'm super excited for i'm gonna be majoring in nursing um i'll also be playing on their tennis team um i got a i got a coach zuzik just brought it i was he was asking me in the halls one day like a couple months ago and he was like what is like your plans for after school i'm like i don't know like I'm thinking about saint Scalaska or you know gus davis or you know some small schools and he goes would you ever think about saint mary's and i'm like oh i haven't known and then i toured there and absolutely love the campus um and i met with their tennis coach and he's just such a such a nice such a nice man and i've only heard good things about him um so i mean i'm i'm very fortunate to, you know have you know zuzik to point that out in my direction because i mean i don't i don't think i would have ever seen like st mary's on my radar ever um so i mean i'm very i'm very glad that I'm very fortunate that I'm going to be able to, you know, continue my tennis career and that's not over after my senior year. For sure. So Mr. Hansen is our AD. And the one thing that he always likes to ask us coaches is why we coach. So turning that around on you, Michael, uh, we're trying to dig into our student athletes that we have on here. And we're wondering why you guys like to play sports. So, and why I guess sports is just such a big impact or has such a big impact on your life. So once again, turning that question around on you, Michael, why do you play sports? Um, I mean, shallow shit in a shallow sense, just to be active, um, and to have fun. I mean, there's nothing, there's nothing better than, you know, being good at something that you can also have fun with, you know, um, tennis has definitely been a huge outlet for me to, you know, stay fit and stay active when it's super, super nice out, but also like, work on my social skills. Um, I've always kind of been like, I don't want to say a loud, a loud kid. Um, and very extroverted, but I mean, tennis has definitely had a hand in that. Um, you know, having that outlet for me to kind of like be yelling and hollering all the time and get all my energy out. has definitely been such a huge impact, um, for me. Um, and I mean, in a deeper sense, I, I think I play, I think I play to, to find balance in a weird way. Um, high school is a very like weird time. And, you know, in your senior year, you're, you know, expected to kind of like, you're not expected, but you're kind of like figuring who you're going to be and like what you're going to do. And it's so scary. And you're just like questioning everything all the time. So, I mean, having that outlet where you can kind of like add that, you know, peace and calm to your life where you can just focus on just one thing for like two hours of the day is is just been, it's been so huge for me. That's awesome. Looking back on the last couple of years, Michael, can you think of maybe one of your favorite moments as a Raider athlete? And this could be, you named watching a couple other sports too. So this could be maybe just being a Raider athlete as a whole and watching other sports, or it could be a tennis specific thing for you. So what do you think that moment as a Raider athlete would be for you? Um, I mean, non-tennis wise, I, I, I haven't really started going. I mean, since I've gotten a car and since I've been able to, you know, get from point A to point B, I've been really wanting to go to like, like football games and like other sporting events. Like I, I went to all the boys hockey games. Um, you know, I, I try to go to every football game and, you know, I'm not going to be able to go to ba- baseball, unfortunately, but mm-hmm. basketball sure had its fair share of my sightings. Um, so I mean, being able to be present and, you know, after missing out with that for my freshman year and mainly my sophomore year, um, it's been it's been so cool 
to, you know, be able to see our, our, the people I see in school and have relationships in school, like go out on fields and go out on the court and just be absolute ballers, you know, and just be <laughs> just in a completely different mind space and, um, just just completely i don't know they it, some people i just think are unrecognizable when they're just in their sports um a specific moment for that was probably probably our our homecoming football match our football game um or or no no sorry um when when we played i forget what team it was but when we played them on homecoming and we absolutely destroyed them in overtime with Johnny Bezacek getting an overtime catch that was and then we rushed the field that was that's such a a core memory for me that's that's going to be huge um that was that was, I'm I'm so I'm very much like I kick myself in the in the butt when I miss out and I have I've severe FOMO so I mean being able to be there um was sweet um for tennis we um um we have this thing called under the lights where you know we usually scrimmage um or you usually have a match against like rosemount or park where you know it's a later game and we get to play a roadside course so we actually get to turn the lights and like play in the dark and it's just such a cool experience to like be able to have your family like on the hill down by the by the church and have an actual student section come to your matches i we haven't hosted it I think for two years, um, the last one I went to was my brother's and I remember, I remember sitting with my family and I'm like looking left of the courts and seeing this like huge student section and guys in like swimming pool and like kiddie pools, <laughs> like throwing beach balls and everything. And, um, it's going to be very, I'm, I'm very excited that we're going to be hosting it this year, um, against Rosemount, um, and I'm going to be able to actually experience that. Um, that's, that's, I'm, I'm, I don't, I don't know how I'm going to feel. I might, I might, I might, I might shed a few tears, you know, <laughs> but yeah. for sure. Another thing that Mr. Hansen likes to ask us coaches is about success and how we define success. So once again, turning that around on you, Michael, and it could be about tennis. It could be about sports as a whole, but how would you define success? Um, I think success, success goes hands in hand with learning. Um, and you can't learn unless you lose. Um, this is very, this is, I'm very blunt about it. Um, I've had, I've had my fair share of losses and my fair share of, um, getting absolutely manhandled by Monomidae. Hmm. Um, but I'm, I, I, I think, you know, in the moment you're like, oh, like, Play terribly and blah, blah blah but that's it's so beneficial to you know have those experiences when you're in such a good state for your sport where you have you have kids from Woodbury and Montemidae going like getting scholarships and and you know committing in their sophomore year to go play at John Hopkins like like to have those experiences where you're like all right I can learn from this person and how they're about to absolutely crush me um, I've, I've, I've developed a lot of my game from my losses and mm -hmm. from those humble, very, very humbling experiences, I would say. I like it. I know this uh, next couple of questions are pretty impossible to answer, but that's why we ask them here on the podcast. Yeah. So, uh, the next one is about the best coach that you've ever had. So, uh, this could be someone growing up. It could be someone, you, someone you've had in high school. Uh, and, and we can define best coach or someone that's really had a positive impact on you like this in, in many different ways. So I'll let you define it on your own. So who do you think that best coach is for you and some that you've played for in your life? Um, I mean, to pick one is absolutely mental. Um, the, the two that really stick out, and I, I really can't choose one between these two, is I would say um, Coach Willette and Coach Andy from my middle school. Um, he kind of – Andy came on, I think, my eighth grade year um, because he was replacing an old coach that, you know, retired or stopped coaching. But he was, like, one of the first people 
that introduced me to HTA in the summer programs and was very knowledgeable in the sport of tennis and completely like changed my attitude. Not fully, obviously. I was still a little bit of a turd going into high school, but I remember I was I was I was always mouthing off and then I said a, I said a cuss word in eighth grade in front of him and he just he made me he made me just walk go walk outside the fence and watch everyone else play for an, mm-hmm. like an entire hour and a half. I was like, oh okay, might not might not want to do that anymore. Um so I think I think Coach Andy has definitely helped me with my attitude towards sports and just being a better student um attitude wise. And then we'll let he's 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 so knowledgeable in in the in the in the sport and he's such just a good role model to look up to. Um you know he he he's never he's never I've never hear him sh- I've never heard him shout or you know be frustrated with a kid or in class too or on or or a uh, player you know he's always he's always pushing this idea of grit and teamwork in his class and and on the court um and you know he he um there we have this we have this term in tennis it's called like a push pusher it's kind of like a player and they're they're it's, they're defined as like a someone who s- somehow gets the ball just over the net they just keep going and keep yeah. finding a way to to keep getting it up and i, I would say i would say well that's been a huge grinder in my life you know him being able to always like praise praise up these kids and like put them put them on a pedestal to be able to uh, grow and experience he's he's and, and and develop them as a player it's 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 been such an honor you know to say the least to sure work with them now think about the guys that you're playing with on the tennis court if you can maybe pick one or two people as you would say that they're the best teammate that you've played with and i've defined this in many different ways but once again i'll let you define it for yourself too so who do you think that best teammate is that you've played with um i would say um eric barber um he was on the team i think two years ago um and he's graduated since but um me and eric kind of like hit it off in the beginning he he was like an upperclassman that i that i was like all right i gotta you know work my way up to this guy um we, we have challenge matches and the in the sport where you like challenge someone above you in the roster and you kind of like play for their spot. And I would always try to challenge Barber and he would always just crush me. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, since then I've catched up to him and, you know, I've put, I've put him in his place a bit. Um, but since then he's, he's um, where we, we every year for Rivertown days, there's the tennis tournament. We always play doubles um, for that every summer. Um, and it's, and it's so good to, you know, be able to, hit with someone that just gets you and just you guys just feel synced up and that's 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 what eric is to me you know he's just we're we're one and one you know he gets me i get him we're just always synced up love it i always like this next one especially when i interview alumni to see what arrival schools were in the past and then maybe how it's evolved since then too so thinking about you and tennis who do you think you're biggest rival is maybe this is a team that you always look forward to playing every single year so this could be a specific team and i know tennis you guys play a lot Mm -hmm. of teams so it could be that specific school or it could be an event too so we talked about fill the hill something that you're really looking forward to this year Mm -hmm. uh so with with that it could be uh an event that you're really looking forward to so who do you think that rival is for you that specific school or an event that you always look forward to every single year yeah um i mean it's kind of hard to not be rivals with park you know, garbage drove, as I like to call it, as mm-hmm. we call it. But um, Parks Tennis, um, it's good. They have a lot of good players on it. Um, there's there's two on the team. Uh, he used to he played he played a while ago, but since he's quit, his name was Anthony, and I just remember playing him during the season once, and he crushed me. And then there's mm-hmm. a guy named Caleb who I play with in the summer, who is on my JTT team. Um, but with Phil the Hill, for the past two years, we've been playing Rosemount. I don't know before then, but 
Um, last year, I filled the hell. I filled this guy named Patrick, I think his name was. And he, we just absolutely worked each other. I mean, um, they were hosting it and it was their home court. So, I mean, everyone was cheering against us. And Will Let's kids go to Rosemount. So you see Will Let kind of like standing on the side. And like when you lose a point, you see him clapping. And you're like, oh no, wait, mm-hmm. he's not for me. Um, but yeah, his name was Patrick. And I, I remember playing him and he was on the two single spot. And we went to this three set like tie break each each game we were always neck and neck um and i ended up losing um which sucked i was so pissed off about that um but i mean afterwards i got i got payback because we played them we scrimmaged them again later in the season um and i i beat them gladly but Mm -hmm. that's that's what i would say is probably the one that stands up the most awesome last couple questions then for you michael we always end with advice for parents, coaches, and student athletes. So let's start with those parents and coaches first. Looking back on your last four years of being a high school athlete, especially when it comes to tennis, if you could give parents and coaches just a few pieces of advice from your experiences, what do you think would be and why? Um, honestly, just like support, support your players and, you know, your kids outside, you know, of what you generally think. I mean, you hear not often enough that, you know, coaches will make it a priority to like get kids to their practice and like go out of the way. And I mean, it's been so inspiring to see the wrestling program and how you guys won state this year and how much we can learn from that. And, you know, hearing all the stories of people being like how no single person in that program is better than anyone else. Like you treat everyone the same, you treat everyone like their Skylar Lowe soldier or Laker Trey Bisley, you treat them like they're, they're at the top. Um, and I think, I think, you know, you can support, um, and, and influence that and, and act like that, you know, outside of sports too, like in school, um, you know, seeing kids in the hallway and being like, just, just, I don't know, just supporting. Them. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. <laughs> no, I like it a lot. And the last one then is those student athletes. So this could be some younger kids. You, you talked about the middle school kids having a big tennis group and those kids are kind of coming up. So think about you're talking to those kind of kids that are about to come up to the high school level. You're a senior now. You've been through this for four years. You've played at a couple different levels here when it comes to tennis, a couple different spots on the team. If you had to give those kids pieces of advice from your experiences, uh, and it could just be tennis kids or it could be kind of any kids that are coming into the high school that are about to enter their sports career. What do you think you would you would tell those kids and why? I mean, I I think I think I would say get your priorities kind of straight. It it gets really hazy and foggy um in the middle of high school when there's so much going on and there's so much you can be involved with and how you got to add sports in the mix and how it can be hard to, again, balance that Mm -hmm. in your life. So definitely like say your priorities, you know, know what you want to be involved in, get involved to like start with, like do everything as, as much as possible, which ties into like the second part, which is just have fun while it lasts. Like it goes by so fast and, you know, high school and also sports in general, like you, I, I I remember like showing up for my first day of middle school, like just like nervous as hell. Mm-hmm. Heck. <laughs> um and now I'm midway through my senior year and I'm like, where did it go? What happened? Yep. Um so now. Perfect. I love it, Michael. The last thing we always do is just turn the microphone over to our guest, which is you. Uh you can give any shout outs you want to give. You could uh answer any questions I forgot to ask you. You can uh mention anything you want to talk about you know uh so once again the microphone is yours and you can go for it all right um shout out wise um shout out aaron herber i love herbie um i think he plays sixth or seventh in nationals in in oregon which i'm so happy about him i'm so proud of him i don't know how he feels because he's like a two by four when i talk to him sometimes pretty humble Um, guy yeah very very humble um 
shout out Hastings Wrestling. That was so cool to be able to win a state championship and feel like feel like you won it even though you didn't, but feel like as a school, like it's such a huge accomplishment. Um yeah, that's <laughs> that's all I got. Awesome. Thanks, Michael. Yep, thanks, Yannenberg. Thank you.